All right, welcome to the Stampscapes Lab. We just did this, you know, kind of involved uh, blue foil piece, you know, involving a lot of uh, layering with the white pigment ink in here and the imagery and the follow-up, um, uh, whatever, additional tweaks and uh, layering with some more clouds on this one. Really great, you know, fun type of scene to do, but it did involve quite a bit of layering with that white pigment ink and um, spray sealing with the Krylon uh, workable fixative. Okay, now anytime I do this type of scene, and if I really enjoy that type of, uh, you know, surface that we did, um, I like to do kind of a quick application um, using the same media, but, you know, just going for different looks. I like to give, uh, you know, people some options here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same ink here and the same surface, okay? But we'll be doing, you know, we'll be going for a different look and a different process using that combination of surface and media here. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be going for reverse impressions, okay? I'm gonna use my daytime cabin on here because a reverse impression, um, the nighttime cabins have this open window kind of space. So if you're stamping them out in black ink on top of lighter paper, the windows will be um, looking like they're light or illuminated from the inside. So if I'm doing this in a reverse, everything is going to be opposite. So uh, it just this paper is a dark paper. So it's, you know, it's conducive for a nighttime type of scene. So I'm going to use my day cabins, which have um, darker windows, um, suggesting, um, you know, exterior illumination, I guess, and uh, a darker interior because they don't have the lights on. Um, so the daytime cabin will thus look like it's a nighttime one in reverse. Okay, so let me show you what that might look like. Okay, now we're going for um, water-based pigment ink impression here. And this is not like a stays on solvent uh, style of pigment ink here. So I'm going to allow this ink to just, it's not going to dry, but it, it I, I have a feeling that it starts to set up a little bit, meaning it's maybe drying a little bit and I want that ink to transfer. So your impression time becomes a little bit longer with this type of combination of media, a very thick ink and a very non-porous surface so nothing is getting absorbed into the surface, okay? So we get something like that, all right? It's kind of like a, like an x-ray or something like, I don't know, that's what it kind of re reminds me of. It's, it's like a negative, uh, like a film negative. People remember what those are still with uh, digital photography these days. Okay, I'm just going to use the other side of this um, cabin uh, again. And we'll go a little bit higher up here. And same type of thing, you know, just allow that ink to transfer. So we got a pretty good impression right here, oops, of that reverse um, print. Now you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to squeeze your ink out from underneath the stamp, okay? So just adequate, even pressure, okay? I do have a, you know, a little stack of papers underneath here, so it gives me a nice cushiony surface that if there's any irregularities, it'll contour to the bottom of the, uh, uh, in this case, foil like that, okay? So that like there, and eh, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to go for one more up here. I might go for something else up here, but let's see how it goes. Or let's see how, you know, this is looking with, uh, you know, a few extra um, images stamped on here. I thought I would go with this um, tree in the foreground. This one's the pine. 
I should probably clean off these stamps before doing this. It looks like, you know, there's probably black ink on here still. I do kind of, I don't know, stamp off the residual ink a lot of times, but not all of it because I'm usually stamping with black ink, so I just don't bother removing all the, uh, you know, the residual ink off of it after I stamp it out. Okay, let's see how this goes here. This will, you know, represent the foreground, so we're going with a larger um, image here. Boy, that pine really stamps out nicely on here. My my ink pad's probably about, yeah, it's that medium, you know, wet. Maybe a little bit more than medium, just slightly past medium. So you want to have a decent amount on there, you know, just so you have enough to transfer on there. But again, it's it's not absorbing into the page, so, um, or the paper, the pulp of the paper. So it is all surface, okay? Normally, um, your pigment ink is going to be stamp out and some of that moisture is going to get a uh, get absorbed past the surface of the paper into the pulp um, but most foils are pretty non-porous there might have you know some of the cheaper ones might be a little bit porous which makes them actually good to stamp on because your stamps have something to kind of grab onto a little bit easier than like a super glassy surface this paper right here, cardstock's really, really glassy, which makes it more dynamic, but, you know, it doesn't have that absorption um, factor. Okay, you know, I'm just using a smaller part of these trees just so it doesn't look so redundant. I don't want it, this picket fence type of thing going across here, you know what I mean, with all equal um, heights. By the way, um, now this is the longer piece. This is a four and a quarter by um, 10 inches. I don't make it quite half page because I, I want to be able to mat this off, um, you know, with another piece of uh, paper. So I, I cut off one inch off the top. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right here. So, you know, slim line type of format here. Okay, let's go for some additional foreground in here. Or not foreground, but texturing, okay? This is what I usually do with black ink on lighter um, surfaces, but um, black isn't going to show up at all on this dark blue paper. All right, so it gives it a little bit of a additional uh, kind of water's edge, shallow um, water, uh, uh, whatever, imagery, texturing. All right, so we have that. And I think I am going to put some kind of background in here, um, some smaller trees, so... Let me grab a, oh, I might have it right here, like this one right here. And I'll put that right in the bag. I, I think I better clean this one off though. Um, if I have my spray bottle around and I, oh, here we go. I just use, um, just regular water uh, to clean my stamps off, usually no matter what type of ink is on them. And that's what I've been doing for, you know, whatever, um, the last hundred years. <laughs> okay, I think I used Stazon on this one last time, but 
that's cool okay so we have this right here I think I'm gonna try something on this one I think I'm gonna try this is a little, kind of an abrupt end right down here so I think I'm gonna wipe some of that off a little bit just so it Oh, it just kind of transitions in that water area a little bit um, more gracefully. Kind of like that. And it's like a little maybe eighth of an inch off the bottom. Then I just kind of wipe it a little bit just so it's not too like super harsh. And let's go right about here. Kind of doing this, this, you know, right, left, right type of thing. Yeah, I think that worked out pretty good. See that little kind of wipe off at the base right there? It's like some of the, the foil shows through it a little bit more right down there, which is kind of cool. All right, now, this type of ink like this with these impressions, like I said, this pad of mine is medium dry, or medium wet. So it might take a few days for it to dry. Now, if you're in some warm weather like I am right now, I would just throw it outside if you can. Throw it in a box, you know, so it's not going to blow away or something like that. And just leave it out in the heat. You don't need to worry about this foil fading on you unless you're leaving it out there for like a month. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, what I have in store for this is like a word stamp up here and then some additional um, texturing in here in the form of some Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. But I want here. Oh, I want to add a little bit more uh, background texture in here before we do that. But I want some kind of little figure in here, I think, like a little kayak or something like that. Okay, let me just go real delicately with this one. I almost just, well, I just stamped it out or inked it up once so that my impressions back here are kind of darker, more see-through than these ones, okay? Because it's, I don't want them to be as prominent. One of the things that when you're doing this type of thing too, um, unless you're snapping it out with a stays on white, which is probably a, you know dry instantly, um, you just have to be careful that you don't touch this. You know what I mean? As you're working on it, or as you're adding something and touching, you know what I mean? You have to be careful about that. Um, but I don't know. Just keep aware of it. And if you smear something on accident. Don't really worry about it. Just wipe it off with a cotton ball or paper towel and just restamp it. It'll come right off. But allow it to dry and then spray seal it. Um, get a, like a workable fixative, uh, Krylon workable fixative, and it'll set your piece up really nicely. Okay, I'm going to put this um, little kayaker down here. I think it would be a good. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't know if someone's going to be going around like kayaking in snow, but, um, you know, maybe they're from, uh, you know, somewhere where it's 90 degrees with, I don't know, whatever, 95% humidity right now. And this would be like a really great place to go to for them right now. <laughs> it's been a little bit hot and muggy for me too this past, uh, this week. So, stamping out something nice and cool and uh, frosty sounds pretty good to do. All right, there's our little kayaker side. I, I thought about putting in the uh, ice skater in here, but I thought, eh, maybe not. Okay, let me think about... Um, a quote stamp that we'll add in here and then we'll come back and we'll 
add on the uh, finishing uh, spray pattern texturing. Okay, I think I have a decent quote for this. I could do the spray patterning first, but um, when I use it, Dr. Martens, it, those little specks of white in here are kind of raised and, you know, that's harder to stamp on um, because it's not really a flat surface that way. Even though these dots are really small, um, you know, it can get in the way of a, a nice smooth, even um, impression. And the quote stamp that I'm using right here has a lot of um, lowercase letters, so, um, you know, dotted, you know, letter forms. So I thought, eh, I better do this one first. Okay, forgive my head being in the way. In live streams, people are probably saying, eh, get your big fat head out of my way, I can't see. <laughs> I, I, nothing has to be really lined up with Stampscape stamps because you're meant to overlap things, things are going off the page, um, etc. But word stamps, you know, that's a little bit of a different story. Quote stamps, you, you, you want those to be, you know, positioned pretty, um, you know, precisely. All right, I love that look here. I love um, reverse text it's always been a one of my favorites i always like doing like white on black or white on you know dark so this um looks really fun like that isn't that kind of like a fun little layout like that okay so i'm am going to get some you know some splatter painting in there okay but i'm largely going to try to avoid uh getting too much in there okay all right, so some Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is an opaque white watercolor paint. It dries really fast, and um, it's a favorite of, you know, like calligraphers mostly um, doing their letter forms. It's very, very opaque, but people have done things like um, you can just add these dots in with a gel pen or a paint pen if you want to. Um, people have used correctional pens sometimes. They've kind of shook them onto their pages or slapped them kind of like, you know, like this and splattered down like that. But if you really like that look, I would recommend getting a bottle of the Dr. Martens and it'll it'll really last a long time, especially if you're just using them for this type of application. Okay, so I, I'm being careful not to touch this uh, at least too much, okay? All right, here goes my stars. The closer you go, kind of the more, you know, precise the uh, application in a given spot. Then you go a little bit higher and it's, you know, wider spray pattern okay but this type of thing right here this texturing um, brings a lot of continuity to the piece what you're doing is you're putting a common texture over everything so it kind of binds things together a little bit more um texturally lighting too because it's something white on top of a uh, you know, something darker. And then, you know, on this one right here, that I'm not doing any blending, except for, you know, certain types of textures, but not really so much. I mean, the common thing was the, uh, these little rocks on far, you know, middle ground, not really so much in the foreground, but this is like closer, farther, farther away. And they both have that, they all have those textures down there. Now they all have another texture in the form of these, you know, these little stars in here, okay, or snowfall. And let's see what we'll do here is, you know, it's a blue tone scene, so why don't I add in some additional stars uh, or snow um, with a color that's the same color as our 
surface here. So it's all kind of within theme. All right. Maybe I'll add, uh, you know, maybe some of these stars will be a little bit larger than, uh, you know, some of the splatter painted ones, just for some variation. Something like this would be really fun with a little clear crystal, too. I don't know if I'm going to add it in this one. I mean, it, it would kind of be cool, and it just takes a second, but I, I just want to do a really quick scene here. Again, that's the uh, entire purpose of this one right here, is just, you know, to come up with something very quickly. Now, you could mass produce these, too. I mean, that would make a really cool, um, not you know, maybe not this exact scene right here, but if you're doing a like a Christmas card or something like that. Um, you do it on a, you know, a quarter page or something like that. And, you know, it'd be two images maybe instead of, you know, multiples, splatter paint, you know, maybe a different greeting or something like that. But we have this right here. And I'll throw a little bit of border around it and uh, double mat. And that should be done right there. But anyways, there's our quick card application. No clouds in here, but again, you know, that takes a little bit more time to do. But I think this looks pretty fun, and I think it's really dynamic. I'll put the uh, kind of the finished piece um, matted and everything like that on the Facebook and um, the uh, Instagram uh, page uh, when this dries, so probably be a couple days. I like to let things kind of air dry. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go and throw it outside. I'm not sure. It's nighttime right now, but it is kind of dry out here right now. So anyways, I hope you can see those like blue little dots up there in conjunction with the white ones. So you get a little bit of variation in there. The darker the star, kind of the farther away it, it looks um, visually. Um, but yeah, we'll let this... Uh, dry and spray seal it to really get things locked down and uh you know pretty fun and quick card i really love this um color of blue foil too it's just a uh, really really dynamic let me see if i can get a shot of this here that's a little bit too much right there ah uh, you can see a little bit of that glow right there and down here but it's definitely like a card in motion in some ways you know showing that reflecting that light in there like that so anyway fun stuff uh the brilliant sink little recap is it's water-based and it will dry by evaporation okay the white oil-based pigment inks, which is most of them, okay, it might not dry on this type of paper. I say might not because, I don't know, I'm always surprised, but um, it'd be like putting like cooking oil on top of a piece of glass or something like that and kind of hoping it dries. You know, it might dry eventually, um, but your water-based ones are going to be much more apt to dry because that's what they've been kind of designed to do. Okay, not so much on non-porous surfaces, but on glossy cardstock is what it was designed to do. But um, the other ones are designed to dry by um, evaporation and absorption, okay? And that's not what this foil non-porous surface um, kind of allows for. So just use the right type of media and you should have a good time with this. The other one, like I said, I I don't have a reinger for it, but... Um, it's the, the stays on um, white would probably work. I don't know where mine is. It's around here somewhere. It's a white pigment ink. I think it's the only white um, stays on that's out there. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure though. Okay, anyways, thanks for uh, checking out this uh, quick scene and hope you enjoyed it.